The topic for day three of World Watercolour Month is time and I always have time for tea so I picked up my very favourite cup which is this one with primroses and thought I'd do a super quick painting of it. I've mixed together some French ultramarine and some burnt sienna to make a bluey grey and I'm going to do an underpainting of all the different shadows and reflections on the china before then painting the lovely primrose pattern on top. I think this is an Art Deco cup, probably from the 1930s, so it's lovely to have a cup of tea out of something that's almost 100 years old. So here you can see I'm putting in the sort of slightly more complicated and indented handle and I've already started with the, with the base of the cup. As I say, I'm trying to ignore the pattern totally and just get a bit of a shine to it so that I've got the shadows and reflections because this is porcelain, it's, it's a very shiny surface. I'm working on a piece of £140 uh, not or cold pressed paper it's only A5. I've just kept it small because I've got very limited amount of time today. The surface, as I say, is not all cold press, so there's a bit of texture to it, but, but not too much. So I'm working on dry paper, and most of it is wet on dry, but just occasionally I'm doing a little bit of wet on wet where I want a soft shadow, but quite a lot of the time I want hard edges to make a bit of a shine to this cup. This layer needs to be dry, and then I strengthen shadows and crisp things up um, if I've missed anything, and just make sure that I'm happy with this, that it gives the impression of a nice, round shiny teacup. Again I just need to make sure that's dry before I do anything else and then I'm coming on to the gold edge to it. Uh, the gold I'm using are mixtures of greens and yellows and leaving little highlights to give the impression of gold. Uh, this certainly is not gold watercolour paint though actually right at the end I found some and just put it on for the fun of it. So I'm just following the pattern and say using greens, a bit of queen gold I think that is, a um, bit of green gold and I think there's some uh, perylene green there to give the very sort of dark. You can mix up whichever greens that you fancy to get the effect that you want and we're just trying to give the impression that it's got that sort of little gilding around the top of the handle and then also on the bottom of the cup. Uh, as I say, it's not, it doesn't have to be super accurate, it's just trying to give the impression of what's going on. Once I'm happy with the gold, I'm getting some lemon yellow and some other sort of pale greens to put in those little primroses. I'm ignoring the shadows underneath, but because of the transparency of the watercolour, those are going to show through. So I'm just putting in very roughly the uh, petals and then dropping in a little bit of the quin gold in the middle while it's still wet just to give darker centre to it and I'm doing the same on all the, the pattern as it goes along. I'm looking really carefully you can see me holding the cup in my other hand so all the time I'm trying to observe and and simplify what I'm seeing rather than assuming that I, I know what's going on even though say I, I love these cups and know them terribly well I am looking 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 and it's one of those things of the more you look the more you see and the more you see the more you understand so try not to make assumptions and always look and see what's happening so now I'm putting in the the little leaves they're just in two shades of green they're, they're very simplified anyway uh, in the design so I'm just using exactly the same brush. This is a ooh, size seven, I think. It's got a lovely point so that when I need to put in a bit of detail, it's got more than enough point for me. Um, I say this is only a small painting. So frankly, uh, it, it doesn't matter that I'm using a pretty small brush. So just carrying on with the, the painting and the background uh, until I'm happy with what's going on. 
try not to overcomplicate it, trying to sort of touch the areas just once rather than scrubbing backwards and forwards to keep it all nice and fresh. Once I'm happy that I've got enough detail and enough of the pattern, I will dry it again so that I can then do a second layer of the colour to put in things like the veins of the leaves and the, the little lines of the stems and things like that. So I've just suddenly realised it's got some bobbly outers on the leaves so I went back and put those in. And now you can see that I've got a slightly darker mix of green and I'm putting in the fine lines. This brush has got a nice point so I can just put those in and again they don't have to be perfect they're just trying to give the impression of this little cup. All the flowers are actually outlined on the cup so I am putting that in whereas of course if I was actually painting primroses as my subject I wouldn't outline the petals but it, I think the outline just shows that this is an illustration on the cup and just helps to to give that impression. Now I'm putting in the veins on the leaves again just following what's going on on the cup they're just little simple strokes so that's terribly easy to do and I'll just carry on with the rest of the, the flowers until I'm happy and try not to fiddle and just sort of, I say, capture that pretty pattern and, and make sure it all looks okay. I rather like these little buds that I'm just doing at the moment, how they droop down and I love the stylization of the stems. Um, I have this tea set that I got from a junk shop ages ago and I absolutely adore it. So I think I'm pretty much at the end there of those flowers. I'm going to let those dry as well just before I put the centres in and just darken the centres a bit more. But say trying to keep everything fresh rather than um, do too much detail. And then because it's a white cup, I thought we probably needed a bit of background. I didn't want to introduce another colour so I've just used some of the sort of limey, goldy green and that helps just capture a little bit of light round of the handle, round the top of the cup and so forth. You can see I'm putting down a, a weak mixture and then using water just to spread it around so that I don't get a nasty hard edge where I don't want it. Um, if I wanted it to be darker, I must make sure that I've mixed up plenty of wash uh, but I so I want to keep this light. While it's damp, I can drop in a bit more colour in places if I need to strengthen it. But I'm just going to try and keep that fresh. So once you're happy with the background, you need to make sure that's dry. You could leave it like this if you want. You could put a shadow in if you want. Um, I took out a few pencil lines that were still showing and then I decided I would put a little bit of gold spatter on because I just spotted a gold paint in my box. So I masked off the cup with a bit of torn towel and just did a little bit of spatter and then I just want to do a bit more around the handle so make sure that's covered up. If any of the spatter goes where you don't want it, just lift it off with a wet brush then remove the tape so you get those nice crisp edges. And there you go, day three of World Watercolour Month completed.